everyone. This has been so wonderful taking part today with you. Um, I made my fame, so to speak, on a speech about male and female differences. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, it came uh, things like um, uh, women going to lunch, go to lunch differently than men, and women are connecting everything and men compartmentalize which is good, which we need to learn to do. And the story goes that men go to lunch like this from my classes. I, I did human resources for 10 years at Northrop Rockwell and Disney. That's my background. I taught at Columbia University after I got my master's. And then after HR, I went on my own. And this gender differences speech was in this communication course. Uh, I think you'll get a kick out of this. Full day communication course about managing people, and the managers in the course, all male, 1980s in aerospace, no female managers, no, 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 no. But females started coming into the workplace, and one guy said, uh, okay, but how do we do it? How do we manage women? He had a Texas accent, it was funny. I'm not good, I have a Chicago accent, but, so, but I'll try to do it in Texan. He said, how do you manage women? I said, well, you manage women the same way you manage men. And he went, no, they're different. I said, how's that? He said, they use more words. They talk more. That's true. He said, their voices are high. They're kind of hard to listen to. I started writing notes because I'm a good student. And I put together this speech. And he says, and then what do you do when they cry? So I went around telling women, do not cry in the workplace. Men do not know how to handle that. Go to the bathroom and cry. We used to cry. No, nobody cries. But the gender lines blurred. The lunch story, which was very popular, used to go, okay, men go to lunch. They're sitting together. I excuse them. They have to be back in an hour. One guy turns to the other and goes, lunch? The other guy says, sure. That's it. Lunch? Sure. Men don't use a lot of unnecessary words. Men don't say, want to go to lunch? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Where should we go? I don't know. Where should we go? No, no, no. Lunch? Sure. They're going. They're having fun. This is men fun. One guy says, I'll drive. I know a place. It's about a quarter mile west, two miles north. That's how men locate things in space. On the map, the other guy recognizes the location. And he says, Tony's. The first guy in the back of his mind gives him a point. He took it as a challenge question. What they have engaged in is male bonding. Men bond through competitive mind games with their knowledge banks. They ask each other who won the uh, Super Bowl in 1984. And if you can answer, you get a point. And if you can't, now you're one up. And now this guy will get you back. And that's how men play. Women don't bond that way. Women bond this way. Go up to this woman. Oh, I love your necklace. She says, thank you. And she proceeds to tell me the story behind the necklace. Because there is one. Women have stories for every piece of clothing and jewelry on our bodies. And in that story, I will find something I can connect with. And I will tell her story back. And if we have enough stories in common, we will bond. Men don't bond through story. Men bond through competitive mind games with their knowledge banks. Anyway, they're going to Tony's, and the guys at Northrop, there really was a Tony's, and this is a true story, all of them are, and you can't make this stuff up. And the guys told me I had to add in that they get their taste buds for up for what they're going to have there, because they know. That's how men go to lunch, just like that. Lunch, sure. Here's how women go to lunch. I say, lunch, be back in an hour, all the women get up. They drift to the bathroom. They form natural clusters. They talk about lots of subjects. They don't talk about lunch. Why? Because they're already going to lunch. It frees them to talk about other things. <laughs> women, <laughs> women actually talk at the same time. Men wonder, how can we do that? <laughs> we listen in the spaces. We can actually conduct a conversation over here and we're listening to that one. And after we finish this one, we can go comment on that one. That's just how women are. So women go to the bathroom. They're drifting in the bathroom, talking about lots of subjects. Women's subjects ebb and flow. They're relating. 
Women use about 25,000 words a day, research shows. Yeah, I had to look this up. Men use about 15,000. The problem is by the time he comes home, he's used all 15,000 up. <laughs> we haven't even started on our 25,000 because we've had to be efficient at work and we haven't talked. So he comes home and we go, oh, honey, I need to unwind. Let's talk. And he goes, wait, wait, I'm tired too. I need to unwind too. Let's, let's read in separate rooms together. <laughs> and the reason he wants to read is men like to focus. They focus to relax. Women unfocus to relax. Anyway, so they're going to lunch. The women drift out to the parking lot. Nobody talks about lunch. Finally, someone says, where are we going? All the other women say, we don't know. We don't care because they don't know and they don't care. You see, for them, lunch has begun. The whole experience is lunch. They're having fun. They'll find a place. But no one wants to drive a group of women who don't know nor care where they're going because <laughs> the driver has to focus, and that means she can't have as much fun as everyone else. So finally, someone says reluctantly, all right, I'll drive. She can't stand it because she knows she's going to be lonely and she has to clean out her car. Women live in their cars. We nest in our cars. We have everything in our car. We have food. How many of you have tennis shoes in the trunk in case you are caught somewhere without tennis shoes and you need to run? We have clothes. We have everything. If we had a toilet, we could live there. But we don't, so we can't. Anyway, the women are now gathering around. They're all happy because she's driving, but she's lonely. She says, all right, ladies, where are we going? Nobody answers her. Somebody does this universal hand gesture. This is going in the new book because I went to Milan and Mexico and Canada and Guatemala. It's the same. It's the same. Somebody in the backseat will go, we don't know. We don't care. Just go. They do the hand. The driver goes, oh, I'm just I don't know which way to turn, which way shall I turn? Someone says, go right, to shut her up. It's the easiest way, just go. Sometimes a woman will say, go left, go that way. And if there is a man in the car, heaven forbid, you don't want a man in the car when you don't know where you're going. This is not fun for him at all. He will say, why? Why are you going that way? And a woman will give a female reason, I've never heard men say that, she will go, it feels like there will be restaurants that way. <laughs> it looks like the kind of street restaurants will be on. And if anyone's listening, they go, yeah, it does look like that kind of street. The man will not be happy. He wants to trust your way of knowing. He will ask the four-word man question, how do you know? And sometimes we know he thinks you're going to go back in your knowledge bank, but sometimes we give him a frustrating answer. We go, now, that's a terrible sound, you know. That's a nasty, passive-aggressive, non-assertive signal. It translates to your listener as, you stupid idiot. It's not nice. Don't do it anymore. Ever. Number one rule in communication, don't go <sighs> to anyone. It's easy to remember at work, but remember at home. They hate it at home more than life. So... The woman will go, I don't know how I know. I just know. Ah, this damn system I can't. All right, so the women, if there are no restaurants that way, what do they do? They turn around, they go the other way. There's no guy in the car going, see, nobody cares. They find one, real scientific. One woman says, oh, look, that looks cute. The driver goes, yes, we're going there. She wants to stop driving so she can start having fun with everyone else. They all tromp up to the door, major difference. The sign on the door says closed Monday, what do women do? Oh, <laughs> wouldn't you know it? Right? You go back to the car, you find another restaurant. Men, only the men in the room answer the question. You've decided on Tony's before you left the classroom. You have your taste buds up for what you're going to have at Tony's. You get to Tony's, the sign on the door says closed Monday, and it's Monday. What is a typical male reaction? Yes, very good. Typical, normal. Red-blooded males. <laughs> I did a radio advertising bureau. There's still lots of men. 
1,500 men in the room, lunch and keynote. The, all the men yelled the S word in unison. And they were so tickled, they applauded themselves. They were so in the same page. They were loving that. But yeah, it ranges from mild annoyance, uh, you know, who picked this place? <laughs> Blaming to rage. I have aerospace ex-military engineers who cannot take it when the restaurant they picked is closed. It jams their system. Why is this? All right. It's about energy. And energy is different between men and women. Men don't like to lose face. They don't like to run out of energy. And women don't know where their energy comes from. In fact, <laughs> that's why men ask you the five-word man question. How long will this take? And women go, <sighs> no, no, no. He's just asking you, how much energy do I need to allot to this activity so I won't run out? No, truly, the men are going, yeah, yeah. Because we women do not know where our energy comes from. We get second winds. We get third winds. We get, we get energy from talking and eating and food and shopping and chairs and whatever. But men want to know, please, how long would it? Because women don't mind running out of energy. We kind of love being out of control. In fact, when we're out of energy, after this conference, those people who put together this conference worked so hard, day and night, they're going to, one of the women is just going to call up another woman because she will have run out of energy. And it's an event. And she'll call up another woman and go, you are not going to believe this. I am totally exhausted. Notice the pleasure and relish in her voice. It's almost sensual. She says, I cannot move another muscle in my body. The other woman goes, oh, wow. You out of energy, wow. And they love this. They are sharing. Can you imagine a guy calling up another guy and saying, hey, I'm really tired? Never. The only person a man will admit he is out of energy to is the person he loves. And that's how you know he loves you. I found a different distinction. Very interesting. And it really came to fruition when I was teaching at Harvard uh, School of Public Leadership. Here's these leaders from all over the world, these little leaders in training, but they were really already leaders in their countries. They're getting their masters in public policy. And here's, this, here's the scenario. This is very funny because I thought I had to talk about big highfalutin ideas. What they wanted is how do you get the person who's not like you to do what you want them to do? So the men and women thing helped a lot. And then I had a distinction called formal casual. Some of you, uh, and I'm included in this group, have a very formal relationship with time. Yes? You know who you are. You were always 20 minutes early. Because if you're only five minutes early, you're nervous. Because you're late, kind of. And you don't even want the stress. And you know that you're formal with time if you spend a certain amount of time per day in an activity called waiting for people, right? Or waiting for things to begin. Or if you're early to a dinner party, you can't go in early. You cannot. It's just not polite. They're still in the shower because they're not formal. Maybe. But you can't chance it. It's impolite. So you sit in your car, but you have things to do while you're waiting because you're used to waiting. You have things to read, calls to make. There's always things to do because you're waiting. Well, there are other people in the world who are casual with time. They sometimes don't wear a watch. I notice some people today. You are casual and you're creative. People are casual, are in my research, they're a little more creative than the formal people. Well, nothing is wrong with formal and casual if you can laugh about it and not fight about it. But the problem at Harvard was at the class, the formal people were in their seats 20 minutes before class. Just as the class is about to begin, the casual people come in, just really happy that they made it. No, I mean, casual people are just thrilled if it hasn't started yet. It's just, it's wonderful. They're just so happy and proud of themselves. And so the casual person, all proud, slides into the seat next to the formal person. 
The formal person then turned to the casual person, right there in that row, and, and went <sighs> <laughs> They did the sound, the sound. And the casual person caught it and said, what is your problem? And the formal person said, you just don't respect my time. And the casual person said, you need to chill. Now, isn't that interesting how we all know the ends of those sentences? Because this takes place in American business every single day and at home. Because the cosmic joke is that you marry or end up living with <laughs> or work very closely with the person with the opposite style. So that when you want to go on a romantic, very expensive vacation together, the formal person wants to leave way earlier than the casual person. And for those formal people who have been sort of showing me who you are because you're so proud, let me just knock off us off our pedestals right now. Because formal people, we do not have as happy a life as the casual people. We don't. They're much happier. First of all, we are the designated warriors of the relationship. We are. That's why we want to leave extra early. We have impending disaster scenarios in our heads. Like, what if the car breaks down? What if the freeway is gone? What if we leave early enough so that if both those things happened, we would still be early? Yes, we would. We're so early. But this is not happy for the casual people. In fact, if you have ever been accused of filling the car with bad vibes, you are formal. You can make them miserable. You make their life miserable. See, they start out, they want to be just on time, and you tell them it's not going to work. And then the frustrating part is the traffic just seems to clear out for these casual people, doesn't it? They just think that's how life is. We know better, don't we, formal people? No, we're just not as happy. We just worry more. Some of you are formal with things as well. I'm a double formal. Formal people with things have a key place, a glasses place, a parking lot ticket stub place. Yeah, formal people. Now, I'm a double formal, formal with time, formal with things. Casual people don't have a key place, glasses place. In fact, they spend, how you know you're casual, this is the test, is if you spend a certain time of, <laughs> a certain time per day in an activity you call normal part of the day called looking for things. And the casual people don't seem to mind looking for things because they tell me that while they're looking for things, they will find other things, ooh, a lot of casual people here, that, because you're creative, that they've been looking for for weeks, ever. One woman the other day said, ever, forever. But they don't seem to mind as much as the formal person mind watching the casual person looking for things. That's, that's where you get into trouble, you formal people, because you go, and you, you judge, and it's their stuff. If they're going to look for it, they need to get to look for it. That's a part of their day. Now, it's very interesting in business. It's very uh, helpful to know if someone's formal or casual. I learned this by going up to secretaries uh, early. I'm always early, right, to appointments. So the appointment will be at 9. I'm there 20 to 9. She's there at 29, but if I see a panicked look on her face, I realize the boss is casual. Oh yeah, oh yeah, what? so I run up, oh, I am early, I am so early. This is just me, I have things to do. She goes, well, <laughs> it's a good thing because uh, he's not gonna be ready. He's, he's not, he may be ready at nine, maybe not. I go, oh, no problem. Where's your restroom, you know, no problem at all. But if I go up to a secretary who now are men, also, thank goodness, and he looks at me like this, Mimi Donaldson? And I go, yeah, and he goes, you're early. 
And I go, yes. And he goes, she will be so pleased. Then I know she's formal. And then I can go ahead and go in early. And then it just sets us both up for our day. Because now we're ahead of schedule. <laughs> formal people live for that, don't you? Casual people don't put in enough transition time. They go, I don't know. My appointment ended at 10.30, and the next one was supposed to start at 10.30. I know I'm being very nasty now. But you've got to have transition time. So I'm constantly training people in time management to have transition time. That it, that you're not going to do it. You're not going to end at 10.30 and start another one at 10.30. You're just not going to do it. It's not going to happen. All right, you can tell if a woman's formal by her purse. Yes? This is the prop. This is a formal purse. How you know it's formal is, number one, it is rigid, like its owner. <laughs> it's not mushy. Now, in this era of slouchy bags, which are all the fashion now, it's very hard to find a formal bag. The other thing that's formal about it is its east-west format. It, it's horizontal format. In other words, there's only one level of thing in the purse. Things don't get under other things. And there are many, many compartments, which is, are thrilling to formal people. We love compartments, and the purse people know this. And I am so formal, I can tell in a glance, everything's in its place and a place for everything. If it's not there, it must be stolen. That's how formal <laughs> I am. I can tell. And the purse people know to put a cell phone pocket in there and it just fits right in and just on the side. Well, some casual women came up and told me they don't put their phone in the cell phone pocket. And at first I was pretty judgmental. <laughs> not me, no. I said, really? I tried to make my voice non-judgmental. Why not? Why, why wouldn't you use the exact size pouch for the thing it was created for. And they said, well, I need other things, and so I keep it because it's a small compartment, so paper clips, safety pins, business cards. And then I realized after interviewing lots of people that casual people are more creative, which is why I noticed lots of no watches today. And casual women don't necessarily need these kind of purses. They carry the huge hobo bag. <laughs> it strikes fear into my heart to see those because they're huge, they're shapeless, kind of mushy bottom bags. The bottom's mushy, which is really scary because that means that things are getting under other things. <sighs> and there's no place for things in the slouchy bags. But somehow they like these bags. At this point in the speech, people say, can they change? Can my partner change? No. The answer is no. <laughs> no. It's not going to happen. So if that's a big deal to you, and this, I've had couples come up and say they wish they would have heard this <laughs> because some one of their divorces was about this casual formal thing. Uh, the whole, ma it's not a men and women thing. It drives you nuts. It's the thing you married them for. And it will drive you crazy. Oh, yes, I found a magnet. See, when I'm early, I, I hang out at hotel gift shops. Very bad. Retail places. But the magnet, I'm going to make these magnets in. This is a casual person magnet. They love this magnet. Uh, it says, people who are organized are just too lazy to look for things. <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> yes. I get letters from formal people. That's not true. Um, I'm going to put it together, casual, formal, women, men. Ready? OK, this is what I found out. Casual, let's do casual, casual woman married to formal man. OK? So in the morning, she says, have you seen my glasses, honey? She's casual. She's, you know, her glasses, she didn't know where they are because she's casual. He answers a question because he's male. He hears exactly the words she says, which are, do you know where my glasses are, honey? Or where are my glasses, honey? And he says, what? I don't know. I don't know. Because he doesn't know. 
And that's what she asked. Now, here's the difference. <laughs> Formal woman with casual man. Casual man in the morning asks, where are my glasses, honey? What he's really asking is, do you love me? I learned this. Learned this the hard way. Because I am a formal woman. Now, women are, this is what women do, whether you're formal or casual. We sometimes tend to hear a simple question as a call to action. And we hear things they didn't say. They didn't say anything. They just said, where are my glasses, honey? I had no idea. I, I didn't say I went. This is before I knew better. I said, I don't know, dear. Notice the tone. Very sensitive to tone, men are. And I was using the tone. I don't know, dear. How would I know? They're not my glasses. And I could hear the rejection in his voice. I knew it wasn't really about the glasses. It took me a while. But I could hear the rejection. He'd go, OK, OK, honey. And I knew that it meant I didn't love him. Now, ladies, this takes less minutes, less seconds, and less energy to do it th the other way. Here's the other way. He goes, where are my glasses, honey? You go, gee, honey, in a nice tone, non-judgmental tone. Gee, honey, I don't know. Did you try the dresser? Just call out anywhere. He's casual. It could be 500 places. <laughs> Does not take any thought. Call out a place. And you but you can hear the hope in his voice. And he knows because he goes, oh, thanks, honey. Thanks, I'll look there. Because he knows that even though I am not physically on the search, I am emotionally and psychologically on the hunt with him. And I love him. And that's the difference between men and women and casual formal. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure being with you. <laughs> and talk about time management, 3500. Am I good with time or what? If you have any other questions, I'll be in the bar. You can ask me there. And we can really talk privately.